Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I wanted to do something different this week, and I thought I would read you a story. Yeah, and this is one of my favourite books from ages ago. It's called uh, The Fib and Other Stories, and I thought I'd read you one today. Uh, now, bear in mind this story is from a long time ago, so some of the words in it might be old-fashioned. Uh, it's a story about a young lad growing up in the north of England uh, and it, a lot of it is about how unfair his life was and we often do that don't we, we say that uh, life's not fair so settle down, uh, have a listen uh, we're going to start with uh, the first story uh, which is called the balaclava story you know balaclava comes over your head just covers your eyes that used to be all the fashion going back a few years ago so the balaclava story, here we go Tony and Barry both had one. I reckon half the kids in our class had one, but I didn't. Uh, my mum wouldn't ever listen to me. You're not having a balaclava. What do you want a balaclava for in the middle of summer? I must have told her ten times why I wanted a balaclava. I want one so I can join in the balaclava, boys. Oh, go and wash your hands for tea and don't be so silly. She turned away from me to lay the table, so I put the curse of the middle finger on her. Uh, this was pointing your middle fingers at someone when they weren't looking. Tony had started it when Miss Taylor gave him a hundred lines for flicking paper pellets at Jennifer Greenwood. He had to write out a hundred times, I must not fire missiles because it is dangerous and liable to cause damage to someone's eye. Tony tried to tell Miss Taylor that he hadn't fired a missile, he'd just flicked a paper pellet, but she threw a piece of chalk at him told him to shut up. Don't just stand there, wash your hands. Eh? Don't say yes, say pardon. What? Just hurry up and make sure the dirt comes off in the water and not in the towel. Do you hear me? Oh, my mum. She doesn't half go on sometimes. Uh, I don't know what you get up to at school. How do you get so dirty? I knew exactly what kind of balaclava I wanted. One just like Tony's, a sort of yellowy brown. His dad had given it him because of his earache. Mind you, he didn't like wearing it at first. At school he'd given it to Barry to wear. And he got it back before home time. But all the other lads started asking if they could have a wear of it too. So Tony took it back and said from then on, nobody but him could wear it, not even Barry. Barry said he wasn't bothered because he was going to get his own balaclava of his own. Uh, and so did some of the other lads. And that's how it started. The balaclava boys. It wasn't a gang really. I mean, they didn't have meetings or anything like that. They just went around together wearing the balaclavas. And if you didn't have one, you couldn't go around with them. Tony and Barry were my best friends, but because I didn't have a balaclava, they wouldn't let me go round with them. I tried. Oh, go on, Barry. Let's walk round for a bit. No, you can't. You're not a balaclava boy. Oh, go on. No, please. I don't know why I wanted to walk round with them anyway. All they did was wander up and down the playground dressed in their rotten balaclavas. It was daft. Go on, Barry. Be a sport. I told you, you're not a balaclava boy. Uh, you've got to have a balaclava. If you can get one, you can join. But I can't, Barry. My mum won't let me have one. Hard luck. You're rotten. Then he went off with the others. I was half fed up. All my friends were in the balaclava, boys. All the lads in my class that set me. It wasn't fair. The bell went for the next lesson. Oh, heck. Handicraft with misery, guts, garnet. And then it was home time. All the balaclava boys were going in, and I followed them. Hey, Tony. Do you want to go down the woods after school? No. I'm going round the balaclava boys. Oh, blooming balaclava boys. Why wouldn't my mum buy me a balaclava? Didn't she realise I was losing all my friends? And just because she wouldn't buy me one. Hey, Tony, we can go goose gone. You know, by the great gooseberry bushes at the end of the woods. I've told you I can't. Yes, I know, but I thought you might want to go. Well, I would, but I can't. I wondered. If Barry would be going as well. Is Barry going round with the balaclava boys and all? Of course he is. Oh, blooming balaclavas. I wish they'd never been invented. Why won't you mum get you one? Oh, I don't know. She says it's daft wearing a balaclava in the middle of summer. She won't let me have one. I found mine up in the attic. Tony unwrapped some chewing gum and asked if I wanted a piece. No thanks. I'd only have to wrap it in my handkerchief once I got in the classroom. You couldn't get away with anything with Mr Garnet. Hey, maybe you could find one in your attic. 
For a minute, I wasn't sure what he was talking about. Find what? A balaclava. No, we haven't even got an attic. I didn't half find handicraft class boring. All that mucking about with compasses and rulers, or else it was weaving, and you got all tangled up with balls of wool. It's just no good at it. And Mr Garnet agreed with me. Today, I was worse than ever. We were painting pictures and we had to call it My Favourite Story. Tony was painting Noddy in Toyland. I told him he'd get in trouble. Can it'll do you. Why is my favourite story? Yeah, but I don't think he's going to believe you. Tony looked ever so hurt. But honest, it is my favourite story. Anyway, what are you doing? He leaned over to look at my favourite story. Have you read it, Tony? I don't know. What is it? It's Robinson Crusoe. What do you think it is? He just looked at my painting. Oh, I see it now. Oh, yes, I get it now. I couldn't make out for a minute. Uh, yeah, there's Man Friday behind. Get your finger off, it's still wet. And it isn't Man Friday, it's a coconut tree. And you've smudged it. We were using some stuff called poster paint and I got covered in it. It was getting everywhere. So I asked Mr Garnet if I could go for a wash. He gets annoyed when you ask to be excused, but he could see I've got it all over my hands. So he said I could go, but to be quick. The wash basins were outside the boys' cloakroom, just outside the main hall. I cut most of the paint off and I was drying my hands and that's when it happened. I don't know what came over me. As soon as I saw the balaclava lying on the floor, I decided to pinch it. I couldn't help it. I just knew that this was my only chance. I've never pinched anything before. I don't think I have. But I didn't think of this as well. I don't even like saying it, but, well, stealing. I just did it. I picked it up, went to my coat and put it in the pocket. At least I tried to put it in the pocket, but it bulged out. So I pushed it down the inside of my sleeve. My head was throbbing. And even though I'd just dried my hands, they were all wet from sweating. If only I'd thought a bit first. But it all happened so quickly. I went back to the classroom. And as I was going in, I began to realise what I'd done. I'd stolen a balaclava. I didn't even know whose it was. But as I stood in the doorway, I couldn't believe I'd done it. If only I could go back. In fact, I thought I would, but then Mr Garnet told me to hurry up and sit down. As I was going back to my desk, I felt as if all the lads knew what I'd done. How could they? Maybe someone had seen me. No. Yes. How could they? They could. Of course they couldn't. No, of course not. What if they did, though? Oh, heck. I thought home time would never come, but when the bell did ring, I got out as quick as I could. I was going to put the balaclava back before anybody noticed. But as I got to the cloak room, I heard Norbert Lighttowler shout out that someone had pinched his balaclava. Nobody took much notice, thank goodness, and I heard Tony say to him he'd most likely lost it. Norbert said he hadn't, but he went off to make sure it wasn't in the classroom. I tried to look all casual, and I took my coat, but I didn't dare put it on in case the balaclava popped out of the sleeve. I said, Tara to Tony. Tara, Tony, see you tomorrow. Yeah, Tara. Oh, it was good to get out in the open air. I couldn't wait to get home and get rid of that blooming balaclava. Why had I gone and done such a stupid thing like that? Norbert Lighthouse was sure to report it to the headmaster and there'd be an announcement about it in morning assembly and the culprit would be asked to own up. I was running home as fast as I could and I wanted to stop and take out the balaclava and chuck it away, but I didn't dare. The faster I ran, the faster my head was filled with thoughts. I could give it back to Norbert. You know, say I'd taken it by mistake. No. He'd never believe me. None of the lads would believe me. Everybody knew how much I wanted to be a balaclava boy. I'd have to get rid of the blooming thing as fast as I could. My mum wasn't back from work when I got home, thank goodness. So as soon as I shut the door in the front door, I put my hand down the sleeve of my coat for the balaclava. There was nothing there. That was funny. I'd sure I'd put it down that sleeve. I tried the other sleeve. There was still nothing there. Maybe I got the wrong coat. No, it was my coat, all right. Oh, blimey, I must have lost it on the way running home. I was glad in a way. I was going to have to get rid of it. Uh, now it was gone. I only hoped no one had seen it drop out. Oh, I was glad to get rid of it. Mind you, I was dreading going into school the next morning. Norbert had probably reported it by now. Well, I wasn't going to own up. I didn't mind the cane, it wasn't that. But if you owned up, you had to go up on stage in front of all the school. Well, I was going to forget about it now and no one would ever know that I'd pinched that blooming, lousy balaclava. I started to do my homework, but I couldn't concentrate. I kept thinking about assembly next morning. What if I went all red and everybody else noticed? They'd know I'd pinched it then. 
I tried to think about other things, nice things. I thought about bed and I thought about my mum. What'd she say if she knew I'd been stealing? But I still couldn't forget about assembly next day. I went into the kitchen and I peeled some potatoes for my mum. She was ever so pleased when she came from work and said, you must have known I bought you a present. Oh, thanks, what have you got me? She gave me a paper bag and when I opened it, I couldn't believe my eyes. A blooming balaclava. There you are. Now you won't be left out and you can stop making my life a misery. Thanks, Mum. If only my mum knew she was making my life a misery. The balaclava she bought me was just like the one I'd pinched. I felt sick. I didn't want it. I couldn't wear it now. If I did, everyone would say it was Norbert's. Even if they didn't, I just couldn't wear it. I couldn't feel it was mine. I had to get rid of it. I went outside and I put it down the toilet. I had to pull the chain three times before it went away. It's a good job we've got an outside toilet, else my mum would have wondered what was wrong with me. I could hardly eat my tea. What's wrong with you? Aren't you hungry? No, not much. What have you been eating? You've been eating sweets, haven't you? No, I just don't feel hungry. Don't you feel well? I'm all right. I wasn't. I felt terrible. I told my mum I was going upstairs to work on my model aeroplane. Well, it's my bingo night, so make yourself some cocoa before you go to bed. I went upstairs to bed, and after a while, I fell asleep. And the last thing I remember was a big balaclava with a smiling face, and it was the headmaster's face. I was scared stiff when I went to school next morning. In assembly, it all seemed different. All the boys were looking at me. Norbert pushed past me, didn't say a thing. When prayers finished, I just stood there waiting for the headmaster to ask for the culprit to own up. But he was talking about the school fate, and then he said he had something very important to announce. I could feel myself going red. My ears were burning like anything and I was going hot and cold both at the same time. I'm very pleased to announce that the school football team has won the Interleague Cup. And that was the end of assembly. Except we were told to go and play in the schoolyard until we were called in because there was a teachers meeting. I couldn't understand why I hadn't been found out but yet I still didn't feel any better. I'll probably be called to the headmaster's room later on. I went out into the yard. Everyone was happy because they were having extra playtime. I could see all the balaclava boys going round together. Then I saw Norbert Lighttowler was one of them. Couldn't be sure because he had a balaclava on, so I had to go right up close to him. Yep, it was Norbert. He must have bought a new balaclava that morning. Have you bought a new one then, Norbert? You what? You bought a new balaclava, haven't you? What are you talking about? You balaclava, you got a new one, haven't you? No, I never lasted it. Some fool had shoved it down the sleeve of my raincoat. And that is the story of the Balaclava Boys. Interestingly enough, you might want to think about the differences in school then. Uh, if you did something wrong at St Stephen's, it's unlikely, impossible, that you're going to get the cane. But when I was at school, that's what you got. Uh, a cane or the strap. Uh, not sure, I think you would have liked the extended playground, a time when they just send the children out for a meeting. I don't think that happens anymore. The balaclava story. Hopefully next week I'll read you another instalment and you can see what Norbert and all his friends gets up to. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, see you next time.